Hi, so today we're going to look at a new ransomware sample, uh, which is Mole. Uh, it's not actually a new variant of ransomware. Um, it's been around for a while. I'm not too sure exactly what's different with this sample compared to previous versions. Um, I do know that the the original Mole ransomware was a variant of CryptoMix, another well-established piece of ransomware. So. Um, I'm going to do our usual things here. Have a look at the PE info. Um, just check for any packers here. Nothing detected. We'll have a look for strings greater than 10. Okay, so seeing a lot of data here, not very meaningful. So we get to the top where we have our list of functions, uh, imported DLLs, and stuff like that. So this is where we normally kind of see the ransom note and some maybe dot onion addresses, IP addresses, and stuff like that, which we've not not seen any of. So maybe some obfuscation or encryption has been used there. I'm not too sure. P scanner. We can see then this is a fairly new sample, Sunday, July the second. It's named Orin Music Panel. And we have our list of imported DLLs and then suspicious functions which might be creating, deleting files, creating services, uh, checking for a debugger, pretty typical uh, anti analysis technique, uh, making changes to registry, uh, starting services, terminating processes, locking resources, all stuff that you're not really likely to see on uh, a piece of benign software. That's fine, I'm going to jump over to the Windows system. We'll go and have a look at this in IDA Pro. Um, just to give you a bit more information about Mole, as I say, uh, I don't have too much information about this sample specifically, but uh, it is a fairly well known ransomware campaign. There's plenty of detailed analysis online. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I'm not too sure what the infection vector for this sample was. Um, the previous campaign was sending out spam emails. I think most of them were coming from uh, uh, what appeared to be UPS service delivery services um, would get you to open a document but it would actually open it on a web page not sure whether then an exploit kit was delivered or whether the sample was just downloaded and executed um, one thing that the previous samples did whenever they were first executed would be to check for a Russian or Ukrainian keyboard um, if detected then it will a keyboard layout if detected then it will not run it won't execute the sample. Um, another thing uh, notable about this ransomware is it requires user permission, so uh, it requires access, user access control um, to be accepted from the user. So the way it would get around that is by generating a pop-up window, say it was part of like a color cal Windows display color calibration. Um, and the user access control was stopping it from running or something like that. Um, so that would pop up, you click OK and then it would pop up asking do you wish to give permission which a lot of people then would just as associate with the pop up that came up before it and click yes. Uh, so Ida Pro, we are not seeing as much meaningful info as we would see with a lot of the samples of analyzed previously I'm not too sure what this string is about. See there it's loading kernel 32.dll. Um, have a quick look through some of these subroutines. Another string there, I'm not too sure what that's been used for. We have that a call for is debugger present? Processor feature present, so I'm not too sure what that is. That could be um, <coughs> another anti analysis technique. Okay, yeah, so not really seeing too much useful info in here. I'm going to jump in and do some of the dynamic analysis first. I'm just going to go and I know I have um, user access control disabled on this, so just go and put that. Hi. Ok, 
Okay, um, we'll open the usual tools here. We'll get Process Hacker opened. Open Process Monitor. And set a filter on this to check for new processes created. Take a registry snapshot and have a look at the network traffic. So, take the first shot. Start a traffic capture, and then just rename the sample.exe and run it. Okay, so first thing we see there, Windows Security Center Service, saying it's turned off. You can see this process spawn, BC9E7C3F7B, it's called Oren Music Panel. So that's definitely what we're looking for. We're going to have a look at the strings in here, see if we can get some more, more meaningful information. And yeah, we're seeing some public keys, we're seeing uh, help instruction.txt, which is obviously going to be dropped with this ransom note. All your files are encrypted with RSA. Um, some information about RSA, uh, wiki, links to Wikipedia pages. Um, we have a dot onion address there. Uh, whether that's been cut off. It's quite a, a typical onion address. We have the display color calibration, so that's the alert we should see popping up. Um, and after that, we get user access control. Um, no sign up popping up though. Uh, we also have in here service, stopping these services Windows Defender, um, which we just saw with the pop up alert. We have the functions, uh, now we're seeing more crypto related functions. We weren't seeing any of this in. Whenever we looked at strings or looked in P scanner, but we can see obviously crypt destroy key, gen key, um, good indicators, and then and there's some of the DLLs and crypt 32.dll, which again we didn't see on the um, imported DLLs. Uh, we have here an IP address, a web address, info static. So let's go and have a look at this IP address and see if we. So what happened? Uh, so a request was sent here, post to infostatic.php, that's the IP address that we're looking at. Um, and got a response not found. Okay. It was not found on this server. So I don't know whether that's been taken down. Exactly what that's about. That's fine. Let's uh, just jump back there. Exit out of that. Just see. Are there any other in interesting queries? Okay. This could be related. Two one six point five eight. Two three point five five. I'll have a look and see if there's any more IP addresses showing. The results in the strings. Okay, so we're seeing some the changes made to registry, perhaps. Anything new in here? Some version information, a lot more sort of crypto functions. Okay. Okay. That's fine. I'm gonna close that down for now. 
and go back and see what's happening here. We have some processes created. So this has been created a few times. Okay, so this exe was put in app data roaming, which is the exe we're looking at there in process hacker, looking at the strings. Okay. Um, this is still running. If we go in and maybe have a look at the stats. Okay, disk and network. I'm seeing some disk activity from that process, so it's probably going through and encrypting the files now. Uh, compared to a lot of ransomware, it's taken quite a long time. It's not really, they don't really have much on this virtual machine. We've got a few sound dummy files here just for seeing what, what gets encrypted. Um, okay. Uh, let's, I'm going to take the second registry snapshot just because we'll see. It's probably added services or stop services and stuff like that before it's actually start, started the encryption so should get an idea of what has changed here okay compare Value added. I'm not sure whether this adds persistence, but I assume that it does. I'm pretty sure reading the analysis of the earlier samples that it did set up persistence. too much. Nothing sticking out to me there anyway. I'm going to clear that. I'll clear the second shot. And then, no, I'll clear it all. I'm going to take another shot and just see if anything changes by the time this ends. Looks like it's going to take a while to finish encrypting, so... I will pause the video and just resume whenever we see something else happen. Okay, so we can see that I've dumped some files on the desktop now. So we have the extension .mol00. This is still running. We have a help instructions here. Uh, all your files have been encrypted with RSA 2048 bit and AES 128. More information here on Wikipedia. Decrypting your files is the only possibility is only possible with the private key and decrypts program, which is on our secret server. So download Tor, and after you've downloaded it, go to this side. Here's your decrypt ID. Okay, so let's we'll see if we can take a look at that in a minute. Um, I'm going to try and get a second snapshot of the registry just to see if there's any notable changes. Um, okay, so yeah, I thought that might happen. They have encrypted the Tor browser, so I need to go and grab that again. Okay, quite a few values added, keys and values, 
no changes. Okay, so quite a few keys and values added here. And values modified. Okay, I was more just looking for signs of setting up persistence there. It might have been in the previous registry changes. And note that we didn't actually see the color calibration pop up either. Um, I don't know whether, I mean, it, it was in the strings, suggests that would happen. Uh, I'm logged in as an admin user at the moment, so, so perhaps it just didn't require authorization. We can see it has encrypted our files. If we go into important files here where I had a lot of different file types. You can see they've all been changed to .mol. And you can see that the data has indeed been encrypted. Okay, so I'm gonna get a copy of Tor here and just see if you can visit the site and have a quick look at it. Um, Okay, so downloaded and installed Tor there, and I'm going to run that and go to the first port address. So you'll notice here that it's we have our decrypt ID there, and there's no mention of a Bitcoin address or how much they want for payment or anything like that. Uh, so you go to the site, and here you're greeted with this screen. So Okay, price of the software and your private key is one Bitcoin. It's quite expensive at the moment, over £2,000. I'm not too sure what that is in dollars. Probably getting close to $3,000. Two and a half, three uh, If you're willing to pay for a software product, then put in your ID, put in a password, put in an email. And you'll submit it, and then they'll get in contact with you. To arrange the payment, I suppose. All right. Well, um, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave a comment below and like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.